I would want Kenyans to be very alert. I would want Kenyans to be very astute. I would want Kenyans to use their acumenship right now better than ever to ensure that as we look into these matters of impeachment, let us not lose sight on issues to do with public uh, finances. Because this is the country where we are told about GDP. It is GDP every time. It is GDP across board. But we are over 50 million Kenyans and we only have less than 2.1 million people working. We are being told of GDP and we do not seriously accentuate ourselves and also identify ourselves to the GDP. GDP is something that should be phenotypical. And once you get it right, every other person, whether learned or not, is going to appreciate the efforts done by the government in place to ensure that the economy is doing well. Mm. Now, we've had a situation in this country where we were being told that the government cannot get the balance between paying off debts and also paying the salaries. Well, we know very well that uh, we have got some people, senior people like members of parliament, the politicians, they actually withdraw their money directly from the exchequer only after it's been done, it's been fully approved by the treasury. Now, in this situation, time and age, we would ask a bigger question. Why is it that Kenya finds it very hard to repay its loans? The reason as to why Kenya finds it very hard to repay all the loans that we have. You see, a loan is like, in agriculture, it's like you are a farmer and the loan is like a fertilizer. So the moment you do fertilize your entire farm, you are really yearning out for greater harvest. Now, in this situation, the farm is Kenya and we've got some loans which are pumped into the system directly which should actually influence our GDP on a positive angle. But we do not feel it even. Ask yourself, because we know very well that when we look at the government expenditure in terms of programs and priorities, you are going to realize that the first, the first check in terms of portfolio balance in order of priority is the debt, followed closely by what is called the salaries and later on uh, issues of development. But now, while we are moving forward, you'll realize that there is one uh, conventional truth that is there. Whenever a government takes a loan, uh, be it a domestic loan or a bilateral loan, you're going to realize that they always have this eight-year eight period, called uh, eight-year grace period, where they have to ensure they plow back this money completely into the economy systems of the country and ensure that this money has got its stemming deeply rooted in the country and that the possibility of repaying it back now becomes possible. You realize that in Kenya, there is a big problem because the government itself takes much more loans that it can service and it finds itself also in the quagmire of, of what is called tenderpreneurs, where a tender is sold back to the same, same government. And this one brings us to a point where a job that can be done with two billion, a government budgets for 50 billion, while the job can be done with maybe even five billion. Why is it? Because they know that they even budget for corruption, for the tenderpreneurs and the rest. And that is the reason why they even shy away from matriculating this into our budget. Why is it that we have a situation where debts in this country cannot all be rounded off and be brought into the budget of the, of the country for us to know how much we are able to pay or how much we are supposed to pay. We know very well that Kibaki's time um, at, uh, at around 7 trillion, we, we, we had, he had the revenues of this country multiply and go by 300%. Uhuru Kenyatta did it at around 140%.
and he took much money. He took much money in terms of loans. William Ruto is doing the worst right now, and there is no growth. We have to say and state it categorically that there is no way you can sensitize the public with hot air that there is uh, a, a, a GDP, that things are really doing well. Whilst you talk about right now, listen, we have got the cheap housing uh, project that is going on, the affordable housing project that is going on. But ask yourself, if you want to know that it does not really affect the common populace of this country, you'll realize that the, the, the people, the Martians of this country, nothing is happening. If I told that, if I told the affordable housing project in Kenya is, is, is a success history, then I think that the students of this country should have been more than ever before motivated to even take courses in uh, architecture, in terms of uh, courses to do with building and construction, uh, engineering courses. Those are courses that should have been really marketable in this country. Uh, because we are really doing great, great, great in terms of building all these uh, units across the country. But why is it that devoid of all this, the uptake of Kenyan students, uh, you know, the level at which they 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 go for this, uh, they go for this. Uh, colleges they go for the, in these universities to get a retool or training in terms of uh, you know the building industry is really declining it shows you that actually there is a very big problem and the problem is we are going to a financier and the financier is adani in this case adani is bringing to us the people who are going to do the workmanship in this country, Adani is going to take control of the Kenyan's airspace for the next 30 years. Adani itself is going to control whatever gets inside of Kenya and what gets outside of Kenya. Adani is going for the, to, to, for the next 30 years, see on what they can do with the title deed of JKIA. Look at this, a country like Kenya, which is all that sovereign, can decide to cede its its own airspace to Adani. Why is such? Look at it carefully and critically. Right now, you'll realize that we are lacking just 250 billion for this. That is the reason why we are selling off JKIA to Adani. The same same way we had this. Uh, we had the thicker super highway, and we also had uh, the expressway in this republic. But all this could not really translate automatically into the GDP because of tenderpreneurs of this country. So it is not something that uh, Kenyan people have really to relax, waiting as if there is something to be optimistic about. I have to tell you that the Kenya of today, the leaders are on a looting spree. And that is actually what is taking place today. So the higher... The, 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 the earlier we take, we rise up and take control of the situation before it gets out of hand, the better. So I think that uh, there is no better times ahead. I only feel that uh, we are the watchdogs of this kind of uh, a regime. There is no opposition anymore. The government is on bed with opposition. So it's upon us and also the fourth state and every other person to come out and fight for Kenya's space, considering that we have got uh, issues that really have to be brokered before it is too late. Because this is the same same administration that has uh, taken away the Linda Mama, they have taken away the help, and also right now we are being told that issues to do with Shah and Shiv are also going to be a tall order. So it's not really tantalizing as well. This coming week, uh, the senators are going to probe much into the impeachment of uh, the deputy president Rigadi Gachagua. I think senators, this is the time for you to um, tell the country who between the National Assembly and the Senate is the upper house or which one is more sensitive to devolution than the other or which one is most sensitive nationally. So I think uh, it is high time you prove that Senate 
is composed of great statesmen of our country who had worked in several capacities and who we've entrusted to go and be the elders of our country to be the stewards of our nation, Kenya. And I think that it is high time now you make right every other thing that the National Assembly did not really give a thorough thought. I feel that uh, moving forward, you need to come out the Senate and put Kenya beyond all this cheap politicking. I know that the seven counts placed before you on Rigadi Gachagua are quite much, but all this has been done to make sure that the man of Madeira is really not salvaged at the Senate. I beg you to go there, take your time, and ensure that you serve justice. Just serve the justice for our people and ensure that uh, at the end of all this, you are going to be remembered. In times, in times like this, in times like this, at such times is when Marende got a name of coming up with the Solomonic wisdom. It is high time the Senate also be very Solomonic and come up with ideas that are really going to salvage this nation and put Kenya beyond petty politics because we really want to go back and ask the toughest pertinent questions. So who is Adani? Who is Ketrako now? What is happening in future of this country? How do we handle issues to do with, with Shah and Shif? Why is it that our cancer patients are not taken good care of anymore? Why is it that we are living in a country of 50 million people, uh, 50 million poor people and 50 uh, millionaires or billionaires? So we have to really go back, restart our timing and pick it from where our forefathers asked. Is it about ignorance? Is it about poverty? Or is it about eradication of, 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 of what you'd call a uh, assinuated kind of a thought that Kenyans cannot just move forward? Thank you.